Okay, so today we are going to talk about pneumonia. We'll discuss that what is pneumonia, how to approach a patient with pneumonia. We'll discuss that what is community acquired pneumonia and what is hospital acquired pneumonia. How do you investigate both of them and how do you treat both of them? And we'll also discuss that what is QSOFA criteria? What is CURB 65 criteria that is used for the classification of pneumonia patients? First of all, what is pneumonia? Pneumonia is basically inflammation of the lung parenchyma. It occurs due to infection of the lungs. The classical presentation that a patient would present to you would be that patient would be having fever and with fever patient would be having purulent cough, the cough with the productive sputum. The basic instinct that everyone has after seeing these type of symptoms is to order a chest x-ray. You order a chest x-ray and you receive a film with consolidation, consolidation like this. This is a classical presentation of a pneumonia patient. Now, if a patient presents to you with fever and cough, the first thing that you would do is that you would order chest X-ray and check the oxygen saturation. These patients might be hypoxemic when they present to you and would require oxygen. And then you see chest X-ray and you want to see the infiltrates in the lung that will help you classify pneumonia, see the type of pneumonia these patients are having. After doing chest X-ray and checking oxygen saturation, the next thing you have to do is you have to see whether this patient had any hospital exposure or not. If the patient did not have any hospital exposure and patient got pneumonia, that is community acquired pneumonia. And if the patient got a pneumonia 48 hours after admission in the hospital, patient was fine when he came to the hospital. When he, if the patient came to the hospital, he was having some other complaints for which he visited the hospital. But 48 hours after that, he started having fever and cough. It means that that patient got pneumonia within the hospital. What is the importance of this classification, whether the patient had hospital exposure or not? It's because of the organisms. If the patient got hospital-acquired pneumonia, if the patient got pneumonia within the hospital, the organisms in the hospital are resistant. And those organisms are different from the ones that cause pneumonia in the community outside the hospital. So what are the organisms that cause community-acquired pneumonia? Most commonly, these are due to viruses. And strep pneumonia is the most common bacterial cause of community acquired pneumonia. Mycoplasma and chlamydia also cause pneumonia and they usually affect young and healthy people. And mycoplasma and chlamydia do not cause very severe pneumonia. That is also called as walking pneumonia, like the patient is having fever, cough, but that is not as severe that patient would seek medical help. So they cause mild pneumonia, mycoplasma and chlamydia. H influenza cause causes pneumonia in COPD patients. Staph aureus causes post-viral infection. Patient had a viral illness, patient had a viral respiratory infection, and after virus infection, patient got a secondary bacterial infection that is most likely Staph aureus. And old and immunocompromised patients are affected by Legionella. Legionella causes pneumonia in patients who are old and immunocompromised. So these are some common causes of uh, community acquired pneumonia, strep pneumo being the most common bacterial cause. Hospital acquired pneumonia is caused by resistant bacteria. Hospital acquired pneumonia is caused by pseudomonas, E. coli, MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus, vancomycin resistant staph aureus, Klebsiella. These are all resistant organisms. So that's the importance of history of hospital exposure. Now there are some other organisms that I would like to talk about that can cause pneumonia. In immunocompromised people, there are certain organisms that can affect them. Pneumocystic Jerovici, PCP causes pneumonia in HIV patients whose CD4 count is less than 200. If the patient is having HIV and CD4 count is less than 200, you should suspect that that patient might be having a PCP pneumonia. Nocardia can also cause pneumonia. Non-TB mycobacteria like Mycobacterium avium can cause pneumonia in immunocompromised patients. 
there are certain organisms called as atypical organisms including mycoplasma and chlamydia mycoplasma and chlamydia are called as atypical organisms because they do not show up on gram stain or the normal cultures that we do for other organisms so they need special medias they need special staining that's why they are called as atypical organisms and they cause atypical pneumonia atypical pneumonia is the pneumonia that is not so severe patient might be having fever mild cough but patient would be fine patient would not seek any medical help because that pneumonia is not very severe as i said that mycoplasma and chlamydia they cause walking pneumonia that patient would be having infection that patient would be infected but that patient would be walking around with in you as if he is not ill so they are they cause mild illness now what are the investigations that you have to do in a patient with pneumonia in a patient with pneumonia the first and the foremost test is chest x ray chest x ray would tell you about the severity of pneumonia it would also tell you about the type of pneumonia and it will also give you a hint about the organism causing it now how does a chest x ray help you chest x ray would show two types of picture either it will show low bar infiltrates low bar infiltrate means that it would have affected one or more lobes of the lungs so if one or more lobes of the lungs are affected it is most likely caused by strep pneumonia strep pneumonia causes low bar infiltrates so if you see low bar infiltrates on the chest x ray your mind should go towards strep pneumonia and you can also see interstitial infiltrates interstitial infiltrates are patchy infiltrates throughout the lungs the the infiltrates would be not be concentrated in one lobe of the lung but they would be present throughout the lungs so these are mostly caused by viral infections mycoplasma pneumonia chlamydia and legionella if you look at this chest x ray you can easily appreciate that one lobe of the lung is affected so this is lobar pneumonia and the most common bacterial cause of lobar pneumonia is strep pneumo if you look at this chest x ray you would see that there are patchy infiltrates throughout the lungs a single lobe is not affected like throughout the lungs you can see patchy infiltrates these patchy infiltrates are cause of interstitial pneumonia and interstitial pneumonia is caused by viruses mycoplasma legionella chlamydia these cause interstitial so a chest x ray can give you the hint of the type of pneumonia that patient might be having and the organism behind it other than that sputum culture and gram staining might be very helpful for you for the diagnosis of the organism and the type of pneumonia but remember that you have to take the sputum sample before starting antibiotics if you have already started antibiotics then those antibiotics would not let the cultures grow in the sputum other than that the color of sputum can also help you in diagnosing the type of pneumonia type of organism causing the pneumonia if you see a rust colored sputum it is most likely caused by strep pneumo and if you see a current jelly colored sputum current jelly sputum like this this is caused by klebsiella klebsiella mainly infects hospitalized patients who develop aspiration just like alcoholic patients so these alcoholic patients who develop abscesses aspiration pneumonia alcoholics this these are the classical patients that klebsiella affects and you would see current jelly sputum in them other than that serum procalcitonin levels serum procalcitonin levels are elevated in bacterial infections so serum procalcitonin levels will help you to differentiate that whether the cause is viral or the cause is bacterial but the use of serum procalcitonin level in differentiating between viral and uh, bacterial causes is slightly controversial other than that you would like to go for cbc you should go for arterial blood gases if the patient is having severe pneumonia if the patient is having severe pneumonia that patient might be hypoxemic that might patient might have developed carbon dioxide retention a respiratory failure so to diagnose the type of respiratory failure that patient might be going in and patient might even need ventilator uh, support you have to go for abgs to look for the arterial blood gases if the patient is having severe pneumonia in mild pneumonia abgs are not needed 
simple pulse oximetry would do your job, but in severe cases, EBGs are must. If the patient HIV status is unknown, you should also go for HIV uh, tests and diagnose whether that patient is having HIV or not. Sometimes that patient are undiagnosed cases of HIV who have developed CD4 count less than 200 and they are now developing those uh, infections, those super infections are those infections of immunocompromised patient. So you should not miss that. Other than that, viral testing PCR of nasopharyngeal swab or sputum will help you in the diagnosis of pneumonia. These days, COVID-19 is a very important cause of pneumonia. So if you, if you suspect a patchy infiltrate on the lungs and COVID-19 is epidemic in your area, you must go for viral PCR for the type of infection that patient might have developed, especially COVID-19 PCR. Other than that, if someone asks from you that what is the most specific test for pneumonia, a test which is not performed, but a test that that is theoretically the most accurate test for the diagnosis of pneumonia, that is open lung biopsy, that you open up the lung and you take the biopsy and you see what type of organism that patient is infected with. This test is not done, but technically, if you think this is the most specific test for pneumonia. There are other specific tests for certain type of organisms. If you want to see mycoplasma pneumonia, then you have to do PCR because as I said, these are atypical pneumonias and they do not show up on the gram stain and cultures. You would have to go for PCR of the throat sputum. Legionella. Legionella can be detected by urinary antigen or it can also be detected by Legionella serology in which you detect the antibodies that are produced against Legionella. Remember that Legionella also causes hyponatremia. Hyponatremia with pneumonia is a classical presentation of Legionella. Other than that, Legionella is caused by defective humidifiers, those humidifiers that have not been cleaned for many years and uh, uh, water erosal humidifiers, they cause Legionella infection. And PCP pneumonia, pneumocystic gyrovici that affects immunocompromised patient, HIV patients with a CD4 count less than 200. What you can do is that you can go for bronchioalveolar lavage in which you do bronchoscopy and get inside the lungs and take a sample directly from the lungs. So PCP is diagnosed with the bronchioalveolar lavage. And one of the incidental finding with PCP is that it causes elevated LDH levels. You can also go for pleural tap. If there is pleural effusion, you can directly tap the pleural effusion and send the sample for the cell count. If you see the type of cell present in it, if it is neutrophils, then it is most likely bacterial. If it is lymphocytic, it can be TB, it can be viral infection. So, and you can also stain the organisms on the, that pleural effusion. You can also go for bronchoscopy. But bronchoscopy is an invasive procedure and it is only needed in the patients who are not responding to the treatment or those patients who are immunocompromised, critically ill patients in which you are suspecting that that patient might be having TB or that patient might be having PCP pneumonia for, or the patient is unable to produce sputum. Since the patient is unable to produce the sputum, you won't be having the sample to detect TB, you won't be having the sample to detect PCP pneumonia, and you won't be able to obtain cultures from that patient. In that patient, you would go for bronchoscopy in which you get inside the lungs and you directly take the sample from the lungs and send it for the detection of TB, PCP, uh, pneumonia, or other organisms. So it is usually done in the critical patients who, who, who are not responding to the treatment and you want to find out that what is the cause of the, uh, that uh, infection since that patients are not responding to your antibiotic therapy. So bronchoscopy should be reserved for the patients who are severe. Coming to the QSOFA criteria, what is QSOFA criteria? QSOFA criteria is a criteria that is used to classify the patients into the patients having high mortality, the high risk patients and the patients that are low risk. It basically uses three things. QSOFA criteria is used in emergency when you want to quick, uh, quickly classify the patient that whether the patient needs immediate ICU care or not. So you, what you see is that you want to see respiratory rate. If the respiratory rate is greater than 22, that, that gets one point. 
If the patient has altered mental status, you give the patient one point for that. If the patient is having systolic BP less than 100, you give one point for that. So if the patient is having a score greater than two, that patient will have poor outcome, higher mortality and prolong ICU stay and that patient needs more care. So QSOFA criteria is a non-specific criteria just to classify the patient, whether that patient is a high risk patient or not. CURB-65 is a specific criteria for pneumonia. CURB-65 is a criteria that is made for pneumonia. CURB-65 criteria helps you find out the severity of pneumonia as well as the need for hospitalization, that which patient is to be hospitalized and which patient can go home and which patient needs ICU care. CURB-65 is basically an acronym, C for confusion. If the patient is confused, you give the patient one point. If there is uremia, your BUN is greater than 20, you give the patient one point. If the respiratory rate is greater than 30, patient gets one point for that. Blood pressure less than 90, 60, systolic less than 90, diastolic less than 60, one point for this thing. And if the patient's age is greater than 65, that gets one point. So if you calculate the score of the patient and if the score is zero to one, that patient is a mild pneumonia. That patient is a mild case and that patient can be treated as an outpatient case of pneumonia. If the score is between two and three, that patient must be treated in the hospital. That patient needs hospital care. And if the score is greater than three, then you must consider ICU admission for this patient because this patient might ultimately develop respiratory uh, uh, failure and might need ventilator. So you, you, you classify the patient based on the CURB-65 criteria and determine the severity of pneumonia. There is one other index that I would like to talk about that is PSI index, pneumonia severity index. You can check out pneumonia severity index on internet. It's a long criteria in which the age is a very important factor. So PSI criteria is also a very good scale to determine the severity of the pneumonia. And accordingly, you can uh, classify the patient to mild, moderate, severe and treat the patient accordingly. Coming to the treatment of pneumonia. In the treatment of pneumonia, if the patient is having community acquired pneumonia and a patient came to you and you applied CURB-65 criteria, in CURB-65 criteria, if the patient gets a score of 0 or 1, that patient is a mild case of pneumonia and that patient can be treated as an outpatient. That patient can be sent home with medications and can be observed in the follow-up. And you can treat the patient in outpatient with azithromycin, azithromycin antibiotic, or you can use doctor Doxycycline. Doxycycline can be given 200 mg as a loading dose, then 100 mg per day for five days. Or you can also use clarithromycin in BD dosage. If there is known resistance to these organisms, then you can go for moxifloxacin, a respiratory fluoroquinolone. Now, coming to the second case, if a patient came to you with pneumonia and you classify that patient according to the CURB-65 scale, and on CURB-65 scale, that patient got a score of two or three. That patient must be admitted to the hospital. That patient must be admitted in the ward and treated in the hospital. What you can do is that you can use amoxicillin 500 mg 8 hourly with clarithromycin 500 mg PT. Or you can also use doxycycline instead of clarithromycin with the dosage of 200 mg loading dose, then 100 mg BD. So you have an option of using either clarithromycin or doxycycline with amoxicillin. You can also give this regimen IV if the patient is severe. Another alternative is that you can use respiratory fluoroquinolone like moxifloxacin as a single therapy, or you can use a third generation cephalosporin with azithromycin as a combination. So in the ward, you can use either a combination of amoxicillin or clarithro, amoxicillin or doxycycline, or you can use a single therapy of moxifloxacin, or you can use third generation cephalosporin in combination with azithromycin. Now coming to the third case, the third patient who got a CURB-65 score of greater than 65. If a patient has 
curb 65 score greater than 65 that patient must be treated in the icu now that patient would need icu care and stronger antibiotics and a combination therapy of respiratory fluoroquinolone. alone now respiratory fluoroquinolone alone would not be given single it would be given in combination with a third generation fellowsporin like ceftriaxone so respiratory fluoroquinolones alone include moxifloxacin and levofloxacin respiratory fluoroquinolones alone do not include ciprofloxacin Respiratory fluoroquinolones include moxifloxacin and levofloxacin in combination with third generation fellosporin, or you can use ampicillin sulbectam instead of third generation fellosporin. If the fluoroquinolone is contraindicated, you can use azithromycin in this patient. So this was the treatment of community acquired pneumonia on the basis of classification of CURB 65. Now coming to the hospital acquired pneumonia treatment. Hospital acquired pneumonia is most commonly caused by pseudomonas or MRSA. And pseudomonas or MRSA are resistant organisms that need stronger antibiotics. And for pseudomonas, you can give piptazopiparsilin tazobectum combination with vancomycin. MRSA will be killed by vancomycin and pseudomonas will be killed by Piptazo, piparsilin, tazobactam. And if this combination is ineffective, since hospital acquired pneumonias are severe and patient might not respond to it. So if the patient is resistant to vancomycin, then that is that is called as vancomycin resistant staph or yes, versa vancomycin resistant staph or yes. In that case, you have to replace vancomycin with lenazolid. And if the patient is resistant to piptazo, if the pseudomonas is resistant to piptazo, you have to escalate the patient up to carbapenems like imopenem, miropenem. And if the patient is getting better, then you can slowly de-escalate back to the lower lines. Other than that, you may want to add fluoroquinolones or azithromycin if you are concerned about atypical infection or if the patient is not responding to the treatment. Coming to the steroid use, steroid use in pneumonia is not a standard practice, but they appear to reduce mortality and the risk of respiratory distress syndrome in severe patients. So you must consider using steroids in the patients who are severe, who are having severe community acquired pneumonia with ABGs going in the downward trend, going towards the acetotic profile and lactate is building up, CRP is elevated, inflammatory markers are up. In a severe case who is desaturating, you should consider uh, use of steroids. And you must avoid it in if the patient is having a suspected influenza. We should avoid steroids in suspected influenza, but you can use it in severe community acquired pneumonia. The dosage is that you can use prednisone 50 mg per oral for seven days, or you can use methylprednisone 0.5 mg per kg IV BD for five days. Now, who must be vaccinated with pneumococcal vaccine? Pneumococcal vaccine is usually indicated for patients whose age is greater than 65 or the patients who are immunocompromised are those patients who are having serious underlying cardiac, liver, or renal diseases. So if the patient is having any of these conditions, that patient must be vaccinated with pneumococcal vaccine. And if the patient is immunocompromised, then you must also consider redosing after five years. Otherwise, one dose is enough for anyone whose age is greater than 65. In summary, we talked about what to do if the patient presents to you with fever and cough, whether it is there is hospital exposure or not. Then we talked about the patterns seen on the chest x-ray. Then we talked about the investigations in which sputum culture and staining being the important one. Then organism-specific tests and bronchoscopy only in severe ill patients. CURB 65 criteria for classification of patients. And then we talked about the treatment according to CURB 65 criteria and steroid use only in severe community acquired pneumonia. So this was all about pneumonia. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine.